underwater. The deluge gets worse as now deadly rains batter the east coast and more is on the way. Major flooding expected today. And a Good Morning America exclusive, a sniper shoots a judge through a window, an international manhunt and arrest. Now the judge joins us for his first television interview. What was it like when that shot rang out? And also this morning, celebrating Charlie. 19 years of saying Good Morning America for 1,538 broadcasts and 28 countries. Interviews with seven presidents. Countless moments, the highlights. The laughter, the tears, the stars, the friends, the family. Big surprises as Charlie leaves for World News Tonight. From Times Square, this is a special edition of Good Morning America, celebrating Charlie, his final morning broadcast. Here now, Charles Gibson, Diane Sawyer, and Robin Roberts. And it is a pleasure to say good morning, America. It's Wednesday, June 28th, 2006, and after that, I have no idea what's going to happen on <laughs> this broadcast. They've given me no pages, no script, no lineup, no nothing. That's our plan. Say it again. Say good morning, America, again. Good morning, America. It Thank is you. a privilege to say that every day. He mm. is still our Charlie for this morning at least and coming up we have such a celebration we want to say thank you for everything you've meant to us and of course for all he has meant to all of you oh. out there and by the way have you looked oh. at Times Square? Look yeah, Times Square. Times Square. You look NASDAQ, Reuters, it's a Charlie Palooza. Hey, Mom. Somebody said, hey, Mom, I got Times my name Square. up in the lights. Huh? Oh, that's right. right. All of Times Square is celebrating with us this morning. We have a big party, so stay tuned, everybody. Spend the morning with us. Yeah, you're going to want to fasten your seatbelt. Go ahead and call the boss and say, you know what? I'm going to be late this morning. It's going to be worth it. And we know you'll miss us, Charlie, but there's one thing you're not going to miss, and that's that 4.20 a.m. wake-up call, <laughs> that early alarm clock. Well, uh, Diane and I got up a little bit earlier than usual. Yeah, they really got me this morning. Usual. It was a very special GMA car Mm -hmm. Mr. Gibson? Mr. Gibson? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, Do, is this the way you like it? Because we know it's very difficult. Oh. <laughs> He's so difficult. Your donuts. I baked them myself. Nice They're very hot. Yeah. I have never seen? seen you guys this early in the morning in my life. Oh, please. <laughs> we want you to remember how we look in the morning before we're in makeup. Oh. We have to get in the car. We know we always carpool in the morning. We always we carpool. Do. We always we sing, And we sing always. show tunes. And yes. we sing Kumbaya a oh, lot. All yeah. morning long. Okay, y'all said Diane? Yeah. Here we go. Gotcha. Thing is. Robin, nothing personal, but do you have a driver's license? <laughs> <laughs> hundred bottles of beer on the wall, hundred, hundred bottles, bottles of beer. beer. The man of the hour! waiting up there in the rain for you mm -hmm. this you got morning. Me. Everybody mm -hmm. does here. And we got you on something else. We're going to tell everybody. We have a 5.30 meeting every morning here. We call it the happiest meeting of the because <laughs> yeah, right. sometimes we're pretty sleepy. But this morning, we had a surprise. The Princeton singing group. The Nassons. Yeah. For every Princeton's honor to defend. Brought rock, 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 Sure to win for old Nassau. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there is so much coming up this morning, and uh, and we think we have more surprises for you. We and think we've got plenty got of Kleenex again. as well. <laughs> yeah, handy. We do. Morning. So let's get to the news and get started. All right, Diane. Thank you. And we're going to begin with the torrential rainfall that wreaked havoc in the mid-Atlantic. States of emergency are declared in parts of Delaware and D.C. Residents there are being told to stock up on food and supplies. In Maryland, a threat of a dam burst forced mandatory evacuations. In D.C., many areas are still submerged. Workers are pumping out the Department of Justice and National Archives. The record rain is making its way north to New England, where flood watches are in effect. Israeli troops are, and tanks are storming the streets of Gaza this morning, a major offensive aimed at freeing a captured Israeli soldier. It's the first ground incursion since last summer. Hamas is still demanding the release of Palestinian detainees in exchange for the kidnapped soldier. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice visited Afghanistan this morning. She praised President Hamid Karzai for his leadership. Karzai's popularity has slumped amid resurgent violence by Taliban fighters. 
And supporters of a constitutional amendment banning flag desecration are licking their wounds this morning. The amendment failed in the Senate by the slimmest of margins, one single vote. Opponents said it would violate the First Amendment's right to free speech. And finally, a day the president thought might never come. The commander-in-chief went for a jog with Army Staff Sergeant Christian Baggy, who lost part of both legs in Iraq. The two met six months ago when the young soldier was in a hospital bed, and it's so good to see him out running with the president. And that's the first look at the news at 7.05. That young kid's been through 11 yeah. surgeries yeah. since he lost his legs. Anyway, let's go to the weather now. Mike Bars. Mike? And good morning, Charlie. Wish we could give you a dry day here in New York City. Maybe it's... God's way of crying this morning. I'm sorry, I had to throw out a cheesy line out there. Let's get right to the radar here and tell you how it's going to wind up today and get more rain here in New York City. In fact, could get a couple more inches here today. Already the eighth wettest on record by the end of the day. We could make the top five. Flooding continues in parts of Pennsylvania, upstate New York. As much as one to three inches of rain expected over the next 24 hours in Pennsylvania to New York, to western New England, and in Washington, D.C., the area will get a chance to dry out after getting over a foot of rain since Friday. And that is a brief look at the national picture. Here's what's happening near you. A well, quiet start this morning here in West Michigan. Looking at the x ray we can see one a small batch of showers moving eastward across Lake Michigan. May catch a sprinkle or a light shower, especially south of Grand Rapids. Otherwise, it is 60 degrees in Grand Rapids, 54 up in Big Rapids, and a light south wind at 3 miles per hour, a dew point temperature at 57. Looking at the satellite and radar composite, we are going to see some sunshine today. By the afternoon, could see again a pop-up shower or thunderstorm. We are on the slight risk for severe weather today. Quieter weather for Thursday and Friday. And the time right now is 7.06. Charlie? All right, Mike, you may remember reading June 12th, I think it was, earlier this month, that a brazen sniper shot a judge in broad daylight. He was a family court judge in Reno, Nevada, and the alleged gunman, the man at the center of a bitter divorce case that the judge had handled. And in a moment, we're going to have an exclusive interview with the first television chat with Judge Chuck Weller, who is recovering. But first, the story of this bizarre shooting and the international manhunt that ensued. Millionaire businessman Darren Mack is behind bars today awaiting trial, charged in the sniper attack on Reno, Nevada family court judge Chuck Weller. Police say it was Mack who used a high-powered rifle to shoot Judge Weller while he stood in front of a window on the third floor of the Reno courthouse. Mack is also charged with murdering his estranged wife on the same day as the sniper attack. Judge Weller had been presiding over the couple's bitter divorce case. For 11 days, Darren Mack eluded authorities. Last week, his case aired on America's Most Wanted. Cops say Darren Mack may have flown himself out of the country after his explosion of violence. Family members and friends pled for Mack to stop running. He was aware, if you will, that things were tightening around him. That led to him contacting his attorneys, them contacting us. And finally on Thursday, the 49-year-old father of three surrendered to authorities in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico and was immediately extradited to Nevada, where he could now face the death penalty. Judge Weller has been recovering, joins us now. Good to have you with us. Good to see you in good health. Thank you. Did you know right away that you'd been shot? Pretty instantly, yes. You went down? Yes, I threw myself to the ground. You do a quick inventory when you're down there, and you think to yourself, I suspect I'm alive, limbs are working. What did you go through in your head? I took myself out of the room as quickly as I could with the help of a Washoe County bailiff. So you could move? Yes, I could move. I had my family called right away to make sure that they were out of my home. Yeah, you said to your wife, get out of the house. Yes. So you suspected right away that this wasn't random? Yes, absolutely. You thought, I'll bet somebody that's come through my court? Right, I did think that, and I wanted to get my family out of my home, and, and was able to within seconds. Now, I know you can't comment because there's pending uh, a court lit uh, litigation uh, involving this fellow, but did it go through your head, I wonder who, did you think, do an inventory of, of who'd been through the court recently? Sure I did. I think every family court judge, perhaps every judge in America, has a list of people in their mind that they fear could become violent. Mm. And... That's an issue about judges right now, because we've had uh, the family of a judge in Chicago. We had a judge in Atlanta uh, shot. Is it something that you think about when you're on the bench? Our court system is one of the three branches of government formed by our Constitution. If judges are murdered or even intimidated 
we have a problem in our democracy. We need to protect judges from these kinds of attacks. But do judges have that in their mind all the time? Because when, 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 when a family comes through your court, chances are somebody's going to leave unhappy or somebody's going to feel aggrieved when they walk out. Is it in your mind all the time, I could be a target? Um, a lot more now than before. <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't know that, that people think that uh, all the time, but perhaps we will now. As, as you say, there have been three judge shootings in the last year. Because in family courts, there's more raw emotion than in a lot of other things, certainly in civil procedures, that kind of thing. And I, I wonder if it just went through your head when you decided you'd go on the bench. You've only been on the bench a couple of years, right? Yes. Did it go through your head that maybe someday? I did not believe that uh, being killed in office was a likelihood. Mm. So, how are the wounds? They're healing. It'll take a little while. They're healing. And there's now been somebody arrested. Have you brought your family out of hiding? Because I know you've been worried about them throughout this period of time. Yes, we've tried to return to the community. Do you feel bitterness? Well, I'm certainly not happy that this has happened. I have an emotional response, but m more powerfully, I uh, share the intellectual decision that we made when this country was formed. You know, it's, it's for the government to determine guilt and mete out punishment. But in your own just sort of gut, are you angry? Of course. Do we need to do a better job of protecting judges? Absolutely. How do we do it? Uh, Better bailiffs, bulletproof glass. I understand the Senate has passed a bill on uh, protecting judicial officers. I, th that's, that's a wonderful idea. I don't know exactly where they're going with it. I'd like to have some input into what they're going to do. Right, and you take back to the bench when? I'll be back as quickly as I can. All right. All the best to you. Thanks very much. Good, uh, good health in your recovery. Thank Thanks, you. Judge Weller. Appreciate it. All right. We go to somebody. I don't know <laughs> since they didn't give me a script. Where do I go? Robin and Diane. Yeah. I love he's in our control I this love morning, it, love, don't love, you? Love of course, Charlie is on our mind this morning mm -hmm. because he's heading off to world news. And you know, he is a reporter's reporter. Yes. Over the past 19 years, he has covered countless stories from around the globe, answering questions and questioning the answers at a time when understanding the world seems more important than ever. I am, as you might expect, in Oklahoma City. Good morning, everyone, from Dublin, Ireland. Paris, Israel, Hong Kong, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. Were you trading arms for hostages? No, in no way. Well, Senator, I, I was there uh, 33 years ago. I, I saw you throw medals over the fence, and we didn't find out till later. No, that you those didn't were see me. Those throw. were someone wrong. else's medals. Charlie, Charlie, you're wrong. That is not what happened. It all comes down to the state of Florida. Who wins Florida? wins the presidency. Good morning, everyone. I'm Charles Gibson. This morning down in South Dade County, Florida, the area that Hurricane Andrew hit hardest. Do you think military action against Iraq is going to be necessary? I don't think that you can be absolutely sure. Oh, when you left here last night and flew down, you hadn't been able to make contact with your own family yet. Have you done so? They're okay. Is it true that you stayed up all night waiting for the American election results? I stayed up until the result was through. Okay. I wanted to know. We're going to build alliances. We're not going to go unilaterally. We're not going to go alone like this president did. Mr. President, let's extend for a minute. Let me let's just want to question. Well, I got to answer this. Well, I mean, I, exactly. And with reservists being held on duty. Look, let me answer this, what he just said about Well, I wanted to get alone. into the issue you of the You tell Tony draft. Blair we're going alone. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I want to ask, first of all, you weren't going to, I've been teased about that. You weren't coming after me at I all. I beg your pardon. I've checked out, you must get the, it's the mother in me boiling to the surface. <laughs> <laughs> We've given you the shot from our perch on high of this incredible crowd on the Via della Conciliazione. But I wanted to come down to give you a ground level view. 35 people across. There has been some sort of explosion. We don't fully know the details. There is one report, as of yet unconfirmed, that a plane has hit of the World Trade Center. President Bush, who is a real competitor, will win. That's Even if the prediction. economy stays bad. Even if the economy stays bad. Okay. Again this morning, we are going to be devoting most of this broadcast to coverage of the devastation that occurred here in the San Francisco area and throughout Northern California. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving from Saudi Arabia. I'm Charles Gibson. The Israeli troops systematically moving into Palestinian cities on the West Bank, rounding up terrorism suspects. Where are you? Where are your natural allegiances? 
I am a freedom fighter. If we lose another thousand kids, is there a Charlie, point I, where I, the cost I, I, is too great, Mr. President? Well, it's essential that we succeed in Iraq. I've now come into the cabinet room of the White House. The first thing you do is call your kids. And uh, I've got a daughter who's uh, in the shadow of those buildings. Um, she walked about 125 blocks to get home yesterday. Well, you you want to have an honest conversation? Yeah. Let's have an honest conversation. No. It's politically possible. It's impossible. We can't no. do it. We won't I didn't propose say it. Was it hasn't the NRA no. basically framed the debate at that no. point. The lights came on at 5.31, and there was a cheer that went up through the room, and I suspect it's happening around New York. You're looking at pictures of New York City as the lights slowly are coming back on. That morning of September 11th, every time you see that tape, every time you see it. It just catches you. Yeah. 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 And there's so many sides to this program and to you. There's the side that, of course, is serious because people are, are, are tuning in, not knowing when they wake up in the morning what has happened. That's one side. And then also we, we love your laughter, the way that you're, you're able to 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 make us laugh and it has it has served you well in this program are you saying for 19 years i am trying for 19 <laughs> years because these are the sides of you we're not going to see my friend i can tell where she's going now I'm we're not going to see the side of you on world news tonight your new job so that's why we wanted to look at this you feel good are you ready for this I'm scared to death <laughs> scared to death <laughs> Spring training time. The pitchers and the catchers and the rookies have reported. Well, you're looking at a raw rookie in this business today. I'm ready. <laughs> Give a warm Texas eyes welcome to the hosts of Good Morning America, Charlie Gibson. like a homeless person. <laughs> I want that tie to go. It's warm out. There's water here. There are pelicans. Okay. You're All in right. Florida. Let's go. Wait until later Never in the day. He's in his give this. Me this little Never again. <laughs> well, I just want my relatives to know I'm okay. Whoa. Oh, oh, here. This is the kind of Where's Waldo shot of the morning. Are we supposed to, is there a rule against drinking beer on television? There used to be. They did away with that. New FCC regulations. Oh, good. <laughs> Banner White Doll. See? There you go. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My day job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. why, why does it sound like tin when I do? Ready yeah, for grand finale here? All right, here we go. Talk about cheap thrills in morning television. Here we are. Here we are. Oh, those were good times. Good times. Yeah, you can remember every one of them, can't you? When you see it. I certainly remember when you splattered that strawberry shortcake all over me. I was kind of happy. Look at his eye, right? When he did that, I'm going to get you. More of the celebration ahead. Get a cup of coffee. Stay with us.
Coming up on Good Morning America, Charlie's Angels. He's interviewed some of the biggest and brightest stars. Which one is here to surprise him this morning? And so many of you emailed to say farewell to Charlie, like Raina from Pennsylvania who writes, I've been a devoted fan of Mr. Gibson's and his thoughtfulness, professional demeanor, and insightful analysis of the news are unparalleled. The gang's all here. Charlie Gibson, Diane Sawyer, and Robin Roberts. And as I say, that's all I know about the broadcast. That is, <laughs> that's all you need to know. I'm just that's up in right. the air about what's going on today. Morning musketeers together again. Mm -hmm. Anyway, do we have the Breakfast Club, guys? We wanted to show that. Do we have it? We're working on it. Working uh, no. We're no. working on it, working on it, working it's, on it. For your last day, we wanted a satellite to go down. <laughs> really. So you really feel it's like, like every other day on the broadcast. The plug myself. Uh, there, there they are. are. Right. Owasso, Michigan. Some of Charlie's most loyal fans are having brunch, toasting him as he sets sail to world news tonight. And we're waving back at you guys. Yeah, they start the a little morning. celebration. Owasso, Michigan. Well, mm -hmm. go blue. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big Michigan fan. Yeah, you do. And you know, they have a special, a special menu in honor of this occasion. Take a look. See that breakfast menu? Hammy and rotten eggs. Is that not honor uh, Let's see. You've got uh, your sunny side up, Gibson. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, two strips of bacon. A uh, fruit salad, Diane. You've got your eggs are scrambled. I would say scrambled's right. <laughs> Certainly a description of me. But you know, it gives, it gives me an opportunity to say, I, we, it's a one-way medium, and we don't get a chance to appreciate the fact that there's folks out there. Uh, we're sort of talking to you, and you don't get much of a chance to talk to us. But one of the great things about having a studio audience is that we get to meet some of the people who watch and so it's been great for the last uh, what is it six years seven years mm -hmm. that we've been able to have 100 150 people in every day down in the studio downstairs and when you're on the road it is great uh, to meet you on your home turf so I, I i i do sincerely and i'll say at the end of the broadcast say thank you to all of you who watch every day because well because you're the most important people involved did you see all those people downstairs for you yeah that's right downstairs nice. but you're, you're, nice. you're right about that it's like yeah, we have what, breakfast with them yeah, every morning you're what makes us a family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly you know charlie has always had a gift of showing the human dimension as he just was telling about that story about the, the human dimension of stories that really have shaped our nation and touched our lives from the oklahoma city bombing to September 11th, Charlie was there. The rescue effort is going on here in New York. How long it'll be a rescue effort, we, we don't know. Um, he called me after the first blast um, to tell me that they were being evacuated. But I have not heard from him since. Cynthia, just give her a hug. Hold on to her. <laughs> We've been doing it, Charlie. And if you look on over there, I think you'll find that he's here and he'd like to meet you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. One of the great ambitions of my life is to meet Maddie, and I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I want to thank Charlie Gibson for giving my son the gift of meeting his real-life hero and for giving my son the gift of a lasting legacy. Maddie thought Charlie was just the greatest. The numbers are fearsome, 229 people on board and none survived. Joan would be here, she was here all morning long. And just a few moments ago, just before we went on the air for the West Coast, uh, she got a call, a close friend of hers was on the airplane and apparently died. This is somebody I grew up with. And, and Charlie knew that I just couldn't come back on the show. And Charlie was there for me. This is always hard for me because it was one of my best friends. You know, he was my strength. Uh, he, he was almost like a brother. While there is a search for bodies going on inside, this is still a crime scene. And there are pieces of evidence scattered far and wide, scattered by the force of the explosion that took place here. You know, you get caught up in the personal stories of all this. I spent last night with a man named Jim Denny. He was standing by and heard uh, that a little red-haired girl had been brought out. That was his daughter, Rebecca. Then he got a call that they had also brought out a little red-haired boy, and he realized that must be my son. He raced to another hospital, and that boy's life now hangs in the balance. I remember the first thing I did is look up at the daycare center, and it wasn't there. And I felt, obviously, that our children were gone. 
Is there any way you can explain when they're eight, when they're 10, when they're 15, what happened in Oklahoma City? It's gonna be very difficult. He's been there with us the whole way. He never hesitates to call. He never hesitates to send us messages. I can't say this word enough when I speak of Charlie Gibson. Uh, compassion and love for his fellow human being and especially understanding. And that's what he gave us. It gave me just a burst of strength. That's oh, Charlie. gracious me. And there's the Denny the family. Denny family. Oh. Jim and Claudia oh, nice. Denny, their daughter, come in, come Rebecca, in. their son, Brandon. They were two and three at the time of the... You guys are all grown up. <laughs> 13 and 14 now, right? Mm -hmm. Watch that. Rebecca, welcome. Hi. Let me get, let me put you in my seat right next <laughs> to Charlie. How are you? It's great to have you here. Oh, oh my goodness you. gracious. Hi. You're all different than that picture that we saw of you guys. Oh, oh, all different. Nice to see you. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on in. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. Right. good to see you. Handshake won't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hugs across the table. Yeah, yeah, it's good to know. Let's go down. It's so 13 and 14. 13 and 14. It's, Who would have thought it, huh, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Terrific. I, I remember when you came on, it was very nice. Uh, we went down to the hospital. And it's very difficult to intrude on people's lives uh, when they've just been through such very tough times. And your dad, all his, his brain was on upstairs with you guys in the hospital and how you were going to do. And, and uh, we asked him if he'd come down and go on the television. And he said, I'm just not ready yet. And, and you say to people, OK, take your time. Um, well, some people do. You did. Well, mm. well. Because you yeah. had the love and compassion. You saw what was going on. And you came to the hospital yourself. I remember you driving up. I was standing up in front. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, but you have that love and compassion that, uh, that uh, it made me feel bad, actually, when you left that we didn't do it. But it, the time just wasn't right. Time and was right. But Brandon wasn't supposed to live. And I always tell the story. There was, I was standing outside Columbine, and a young woman came up to me, and she said, would you like to talk to me? And I said, I, you have me at a disadvantage. I don't know who you are. And she said, my dad was Coach Sanders, and he was the adult Aww. killed inside. Oh my gosh. And I said to her, uh, well, sure, I'd love to talk to you, but do you want to talk to me on television? And she said, I have two choices. I can stay home with the pictures, or I can go on national television, and I can tell everybody what a great guy my dad was. And then I can go home and look at the pictures. And I said, if it works for you, and that's always the... The, uh, the litmus, if it works for you, if it helps you, then we'd love to talk to well, you. Well, you know, that's what, that's what Good Morning America and you and the entire production staff did for us. They, were, they, they gave us the opportunity to, to inspire other people. And yeah. hearing from the people uh, after 9-11 in New York that came the following anniversary of the yeah. City bombing, they said, you helped us get through this. And I went, boy, it was yeah. all worth it. Yeah. Did we fly you in from Oklahoma City? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. This, is, this is a big budget show. Isn't it? Wow. I just have to ask before we leave, you've been through a lot of surgeries in mm -hmm. this family's yeah. lifetime. How's mm -hmm. everything going? It's going good for us mainly because we know that it's going to be okay in the end and everything. So You good. look great. You look great. You should. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Brandon, so you glad you're here too. Charlie, yeah. you growing a little mustache? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not old enough. I'm going to take the razor after you. Listen, you're looking just like Dad with a mustache. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank for you. For everything and, and best of luck. You're 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 going to a uh, you're going to a spot where you're filling the shoes of Peter Jennings. And I saw Peter Jennings on television after 9/11. And you both have an enormous heart and compassion and aren't afraid to show it. And you're a perfect fit, and God bless you. Well, thanks okay. ever so much. Thank you. Thank I feel you. like an honorary member of the Denny family. Oh, well, right. you always And will I be. love how he puts it into words better than we can in yeah. describing Charlie. Yeah, well, he's Paul. taking over for me when I leave here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go to the weather now. I need Mike to work. Yeah. And good morning. We've got a lot of people down here that feel the same way, including weekend right. actor Bill Weir had a tough time actually so getting here. Story. I was shooting a story in Atlanta yesterday. I was stuck at the airport. All the flights were canceled, but a woman from the airline insisted I get on an overbooked flight so I could be here for Charlie. So whoever got bumped, uh, there's one less Charlie Gibson fan, but a lot more of them in Atlanta. On behalf of the weekend team, we love you, Charlie. Thanks so much, Bill. Let's quickly get you to the weather real quick. And it's hot out west. I just want to show you that map of some of these temperatures. Well above normal out there. 102 out Las Vegas, 94 in, Proto, uh, in Provo, and 102 in Phoenix. That's a brief look at the national picture. Here's what's happening. Here you go.
As we head through your Wednesday, a pretty decent day. The only exception may be just a hit or miss shower or thunderstorm, especially as we go through the afternoon. We'll keep an eye on that. We are in the slight risk for severe weather, especially east of Grand Rapids. Quieter for Thursday and Friday and warmer by the end of the weekend. And this portion of the weather brought to you by Subaru. Robin? Chatting, chatting with the Denny family up here. It looks like a party down there. You know, behind the scenes, so many people worked on this special program that we have for you this morning. So many people to thank, really too many, but a special thanks to the senior producer, Dennis O'Brien, O'Brien, coordinating producer, Patty Nager, producer, Brian O'Keefe, associate producer, Kevin Chupka, and editors, Dan Ricaldi, Mike Patino, and Roberto Petrello. Great work and it's going to continue. We hope that you'll stay with us. Coming up next, she's one of Charlie's all-time favorite guests. <clears throat> oh, can you guess who she is? A little huzzy. Oh, she's here. And we also have another. That's a big clue. Go girl. Go girl. Uh, you do know. And I want to share another email from a GMA viewer wishing Charlie well. Liz of Connecticut writes, I'm a single mother with 12-year-old twins. We wake up with you every morning, and Charlie is like a father slash grandpa to us. Good luck, old friend. Wow. Charlie does a lot of interviews and many of them with women and there is one woman who sneaks into the audience every single morning just to make sure he doesn't like anybody else better than her. I think I see her. She comes to the show every morning and it would be... Look at her, look at her right there, right there. There she is. Kelly Ripa. Get up here. <laughs> my, my, children, my children tease me because when Kelly uh, was doing Hope and Faith, yes. uh, there was a day when I went down and, and Kelly and Faith Ford uh, both put their faces right up next to mine and we had a picture taken and it's been on my refrigerator for a lot of years. <laughs> it's framed and hanging in several rooms of my house. <laughs> and you know, I just want to say that I, ever since you filed the restraining order against me, I've had lots of time to do research because right. I thought that you and I had a special relationship, a one-on-one -on -one bond. But upon my research, I've realized that you have made Are you leading more to a than case here? one <laughs> or two. Several women blush and wink and sigh. So take a look at this, Ooh, mister. You're simply the best. You're gonna have to face it. You're addicted to love. May I say? Yes. That you're a very good looking woman. <laughs> Is that an inappropriate thing to say, Kelly? I think you're a hug too, Charlie, and I'll go there with you. Yes, I will. That's <laughs> That's oh, don't right. stop. Don't stop. What is this? I'm here? rubbing your leg with my shoe. Is that inappropriate? So it's a bit of, you know, shaking a little pan here, shimming across the kitchen with your muffin tray. Yes. But you shake more than a little pan. I mean, it, the way we saw oh, the clips, thank you, sir. Uh, the way we saw the clips, <laughs> you're a high maintenance lady. Thank you. <laughs> You're just a flirt and a tease, that's all. <laughs> I saw this in the Nickelodeon once, and I've always wanted to try it. Well, flattery will get you everywhere. So. <laughs> you I bet you have more meals. I wait, and I... No disrespect to the two of you, right. but nobody's looking at you at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about age. I mean, you're, you're about I'm my 50. age, right? 50? How old are you? I'm 51. Cute. Let Hi. me just say, Miss Ripper, that toe rubbing on the leg thing. <laughs> Did that cross the line? I, I believe that crossed every known line in the history of talk shows. It was just fine. <laughs> Charlie didn't seem to mind. He, as a matter of fact, he said if you would rub his leg a little bit more, maybe I wouldn't have to. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, I continue. Should we 
leave. I'm sure do you need some time. Someplace at home, Mark Consuelos is adding a little vodka to his I'm coffee. <laughs> Melting it back. I'm now rubbing the back of his leg with my toe. <laughs> you are a shameless hussy. Heaven knows it's I his love last it. Day. If you can't be a shameless hussy on the last day, when right, can you? Right, right, exactly. Thank you very much. That's right. Now, on World News Tonight, I suppose you're not going to make appearances there. Well, I mean, none that you'll be able to see me, but Charlie will know I'm there, won't you, Charlie? We'll just check each other out during the commercials. That's right, Give honey. Give a whole new oh, dimension. You're very I miss sweet you to come. so Thanks. much, but I will watch you every night. You know I will. Thank every you very, very much. Charlie. Every morning with you girls. Right, and you. remember, stand in line. Me. Okay? <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Gibson family. Arlene, the girls, all going to be here? Yeah, the family is all here. I'm so pleased that Nassoon's came. Guys, why don't you take us Princeton, off the commercial? Harley, the last time you were in Stillwater, Minnesota, the town turned out in droves. We love you, we'll miss you, and we love Good Stillwater. It's what a, a very day special town. As we mentioned, I think yesterday when we turned turned out and did the show in Stillwater, there were three times as many people there for the show as there live in Stillwater, Minnesota. And very quiet right. music here from these great folks who provide jazz at Lincoln Center because my grandson is here, and I don't want to disturb the baby. Uh, grandson Reese is here. And you know, I think he has your hairline. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does. He's got a little cowlick right in front, the whole thing. Anyway. Good morning, America. It is Wednesday, June 28, 2006, and we're glad you could join us this morning. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just Reese who's here. As we've been saying all along, this is a family event when one of us becomes part of the show. Sure. Not just because the alarm clock goes off and wakes up Arlene or Mike. No, it really is. It is very much a family half hour. So in this half hour, you're going to meet my family, who for all these years have made this journey possible, been very understanding of the crazy hours. Oh, there they are. <laughs> my wife, Arlene, and my daughter, Kate, and my daughter, Jessica, and my grandson, Reese. And they'll be here in a minute, but let's go to Robin and do the news. All right, Charlie and Diane, we begin with the deluge of rain that's proven deadly this morning. In Maryland, three people have been killed. They were washed out of the bed of a pickup truck. The flooding is threatening to overwhelm a dam, and parts of Washington and Delaware have declared states of emergency. The heavy downpours are making their way north through New England. They could certainly use some of that wet weather out west. Wildfires rage on in Nevada, where a state of emergency has been declared there. Over 100,000 acres have been scorched by dozens of lightning-sparked fires. A serial murder known as the Railroad Killer has been put to death in Texas. Angel Resendiz was linked to at least 15 killings near railroad tracks around the country. In his last words, he asked God for forgiveness. Even a small whiff of cigarette smoke is harmful, according to a disturbing new report from the nation's top doctor. The Surgeon General says secondhand smoke increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome, severe asthma attacks, cancer, and heart disease. As we head into the July 4th weekend, a timely reminder about the dangers of fireworks. Government officials show us every year just how powerful these explosives can be. More than 10,000 people are injured by fireworks every year. Nearly half are children. And that is the latest news at 8.02. The latest weather again to Mike. 
And good morning, Robin. It's okay, everybody, to celebrate if you want just a little bit. You talked about that rain down in the Washington, D.C. area. They will dry out today. The rest of the Northeast, not so lucky as we fly around the map right here. Albany today, high 76 and some rain. Thunderstorms possible later on today down in the Carolinas. Nashville, high of 86. Should miss the rain. Sunny and hot in the south. Waco, Texas, with a high of 94 today. Scattered thunderstorms possible for Reno, 89, and St. Cloud, Minnesota. That's the place to be. Sunny and beautiful. High of 79. And that's a brief look at the national picture. Here's what's happening near you. A pretty quiet start here in West Michigan this morning. Watching an area of very light rain showers moving across Lake Michigan. There is a little bit of lightning, but it does look like it'll hit Van Buren County into Berrien County, so south of Grand Rapids this morning. Otherwise, temperatures range from 55 in Big Rapids and Ludington to 64 degrees in Holland and Kalamazoo, our dew point in the upper 50s. As we go through the day today, we certainly will see some sunshine at times, and then by the afternoon, a few clouds and the chance for a shower or a thunderstorm, very similar to yesterday. Highs today in the mid-upper 70s. And the time right now is just about 8.04, and back to the man of the hour. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, one of the nicer parts of being part of this program has been the chance to include family. Uh, if I was going to be gone most of the day, certainly from the crack of dawn, they might as well get some of the benefits from my job. And so I've tried to share a bit. Family. And we're here at the faculty room at NASA Hall at Princeton University. And we want to wish Dad a happy birthday. And, and good, good morning, morning America. America. When daughter Jessica got into Princeton, when younger daughter Kate got into Northwestern, I got chances to brag on the air. Ooh, they got and when my wife Arlene was asked to be head of the Spent School in New York, unexpectedly, I got a chance to brag about that as well. I went to an all-girls school and we... we... What would that girls' school be? It was called Spence. Ah. It was here in New York City. Ah, do you know who the new head of the Spence School is? No. You don't? No. Oh, Gwyneth. What? <laughs> Gwyneth. It's my wife. You're kidding. No. <laughs> Arlene was a bit perturbed. The school hadn't yet made the announcement when I blabbed it on the air. She just last Friday retired from the job after eight years as head of school. Previously, she'd run a school in New Jersey, Kent Place. So one year, we got the Kent Place chamber singers in for some Christmas music. And among the singers was daughter Jessica. I asked the audience if they could pick out anyone with a likeness. If I can take a little liberty here. <laughs> that was my hug for the day. A few years later, I got to take my daughter Kate, a film student at the time, to the Oscars. I said I wanted to go in the back way. She wanted to go on the red carpet. So there we were, being interviewed by Roger Ebert and Willow Bay. I hope you come back someday as a director. I hope I do too, you know? <laughs> I, said, I said if that ever happens, I'll come and sit in the bleachers for her. Okay. But it wasn't just wife and kids. Good Morning America gave me the chance to go back and visit my boyhood home in Evanston, Illinois. My mom and dad lived there for 28 years. Mom died in 1978, but I had a chance to talk about her Christmas trees. And just like her, you're forever tweaking the tree. I noticed that I don't think the kids put enough icicles way up top. I'll never decorate a tree as good as my mom's. Dad died in 1987. And a few years later, I went back to the old Comiskey Park in Chicago, where he took me to my first baseball game. I could pick out where we sat. The funny thing is, you don't really need to be here to see it or to feel it, because it's all in here. And my brother Lang, he passed away this past January. But Good Morning America visited his home once, a barn, where he invited magnificent musicians from a nearby music college to give concerts at potluck dinners that he staged for the neighborhood. Lang loved those evenings. Basically, you are calling and saying, would you like to play in the living room of my yeah, barn? And entertain me for two hours uh, for nothing. <laughs> Dexter, Aww. come here. Come here, Dexter. Even our family pet made it onto the program once. Dexter was a Cairn Terrier, named after the former Redskin football player, Dexter Manley. Dexter came on GMA to meet his namesake. So what are the kids doing now? Daughter Jessica just had her first child, son Reese. The first time I saw him was on the air, when pictures taken hours after birth were shown the next morning. 
Do you, you want to introduce everybody to your grandson, that is Charlie? Andrew Reese Gibson Rosen, born at 12:01 yesterday, a minute after noon. This is the first time you're seeing. The first time I've seen these pictures. I have not seen it. I purposely did not look at any. And your pictures. first grandbaby. Reese is three and a half months old now. Here's last week's picture. And Kate, she's now a producer for the Food Network and chef Bobby Flay. She was in Times Square just a couple of weeks ago shooting his program. Can we have a close-up of those two smiles? You think have they may look alike, I think? A father and a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> More alike. You always say I look like you in drag, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> one last thing I want to show you, our favorite family portrait. It's this one, Jessica, me, Kate, and Arlene, and our adopted son. He's down there at the bottom but you all know about him without my saying anything. Oh. So the tears come, of course, when I see Dexter Manley, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and may I introduce live here with us, Arlene, Kate. That would be Charlie in the middle. That would be Jessica. And this would be three months, three months now. Three months old. Reese. And hey, by the way, Charlie, Yeah. your wayward son is here. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning, sir. How are you? Wow. Nice to see you. I didn't know you were going to be here. Well, it was the last minute thing. I've been hiding behind the sofa all morning. <laughs> How did you sneak in? It's not easy being sneaky. Well, because when you're as big a star as you do, there's a retinue and there's cameras and there's... Well, that's know. true, but being 18 inches tall, I'm often overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. So you came in under the radar. That's right. Yeah. You know, you notice I'm not wearing my trench coat these days ever since I moved to Sesame uh, News Nightly. <laughs> so you're the competition. Well, actually, I had to beat Katie Couric for that job. So, uh, how are you? I've been, well, I'm, I'm very well, but I've been worried about you recently because yeah. there's been such rain, and I was worried that perhaps the, oh. the lily pads would No, be... no, it's perfect. It, it's, I'm, the, I'm the only species on Earth that this is perfect for. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. So you're actually... Hello. How, how are you? you? How are you doing? Yeah. Excuse I'm very us. Well. I'm very well. Hello. You know, we do, you, we do love that picture uh, of you that we have, and while oh. Arlene has gotten a little older, and Kate's gotten a little older, and I've gotten yeah. a lot older, well, and we all have. Jessica's <laughs> come along, you don't look any older. Well, you know, it's good, clean swamp living. I mean, I stay moist. Uh, I recommend that to everybody. But I should say uh, to everyone out there, if you find yourself turning green, you should probably see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. It's a natural moisturizer for you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You know, I, I am thrilled for your, for your continued success. And, and I'm going to be watching every night. And I, I just hope that, uh, gee, I don't know whether it's appropriate for me to be on the evening news or not, but maybe we can get together again. Absolutely. You would yeah. be well, because I know you used to report. That's uh, true. As a matter of fact, I hate to tell you this, yeah. but Jessica and I and Kate and I used to watch you every morning on Sesame Street. Yeah. Jessica would be eating her Fruit Loops one by one. Yeah. And yeah. we'd watch you, and, and you were, in their minds, yeah. The, sort of the prototype of what a reporter should be. Still oh. is. You mean Still green is. with big googly eyes? You got it. Yeah, you got yeah. It. I can see me. you followed in my mouth. Uh, excuse me. Good to see you, Kermit. Yes, Kermit. Thank you. Could you, Thank you. Could you just bag it? Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 terrible thing to say. Did you sense her regard? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to Arlene and yeah. Kate and Jessica for just a moment because I know that this whole 19 years has been about your lives too. How many times did you say to yourselves, oh, we could just have him at night some? Really? No kidding. Charlie's a night person. Yeah. That's the strange thing about this job. He's really a night person. So I never see him in the morning, and I think that's probably a good thing. You get to see him. <laughs> that's right. True I'm sort story. of the morning concubine here. True story. Yeah. She's never, ever woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning when I get up, unless there's a problem at school, and then she's up thinking about it. The one morning that she woke up was the day it was going to announce that I was going to the day that was going to be announced that I was going to World News. I walked out of the closet and she said, are you going to wear that tie? <laughs> I said, you don't like it? No. I went back in the closet, came out again. She was asleep. <laughs> Did the two of you watch? Sure. Every morning. It's a nice way to catch up with dad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing in high school when we heard all the puns relayed to millions of people. 
<laughs> that's a job of dads to embarrass their daughters. That's right. Don't you that's know a great that? job. That's the number one. Job. <laughs> that's what dads do for a living. And, and it Kate, is. you ended up in television. See, that's a tribute. I did. I did. It's a, it's a tribute. It's a different kind of television. He doesn't he doesn't cook. So uh, you know, it's it's like the you know he really doesn't Except cook. Except for so. that tortilla casserole. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't that. don't bring that up no, again. I know they all. Yeah. Really. What, what, what did we have for your birthday dinner and your birthday dinner the other night? We had taco casserole. casserole. <laughs> <laughs> Number one recipe. Okay, you have a wedding coming up. I do. Right? I do. I'm getting married uh, in September. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, if, thank you very much. Yeah. If he behaves that long. It's not a pig, is it? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, good. 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 So we have to show, because we show Jessica's beautiful wedding, so we must still, even though your yeah. dad's leaving, we'll still have to show Would you let us wedding. do it? I, I will. I will. Uh, it depends. If I'm having a good hair day, <laughs> I'm all for it. Robin and I cry copiously at weddings, so we're going to come and sob uncontrollably whether you want to I'm looking forward to that very much. I want loud audible stops. <laughs> loud audible stops. That'll be good. So Kermit, do you have any advice for dad before we sign off here? Well, I, I, I noticed that now from now on you'll be standing rather than sitting behind a desk. <laughs> True. You'll get more exercise. True. That's going to increase your longevity. True. I like that. Good. That's not advice. That's just me trying to think of something to say. <laughs> Listen, I do have, Charlie, I do have one question. Now that, now that I'm officially part of the family, can I borrow the car? <laughs> just show me your license, son. Uh, and don't stay out too late. Okay. All right. You got it. You got all it, right. Dad. <laughs> and make sure you behave yourself and stay in the front seat with the pig. Right. Uh, no, I'll be in the trunk. <laughs> Glory. Well, we have more surprises for you, Charlie. It's nice having your family here. We None stick better around than this. And we have Kermit, some more charges. Thank you. Some thank more surprises when we come back. You'll never guess what's in star for Charlie when we come back. Can I say that? Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's been an, a, a morning of surprises, as you know. Yep. And this one we think really is is going to get you. I love talking sports with you in the morning. You're a big sports fan, and we have one of your sports, your number one sports hero, ladies oh, no. and gentlemen, Cal oh, Ripken Jr. Oh, Me. You all have a lot in common because the you... number of times I've gone to see him and then he goes to see me. Wow! Exactly. Because uh, we, we were thinking, you guys, have, you guys have a lot in common. You've been here 19 years. Yeah. Cal Ripken holds, of course, the record: 2,632 consecutive games over 17 seasons, and that is amazing. That kind, yeah. that kind of work ethic. And I know you came bearing gifts, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, first I want to thank you personally for your. Uh, for your long career, so to speak, uh, and thank you for hanging in with the, those Orioles all those years. <laughs> we had a really uh, difficult st start back in 1987. It wasn't the best of uh, years for the Orioles. But Not really for the Orioles or for your pop. No. 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 Bless your did, dad. Bless your dad. We did bring uh, a gift here. Is it my job to unveil this? Please. Please okay. Whoa! The 19 years obviously rep represents the uh, number of years you've been with the Good Morning America, and uh, it's actually eight since I came back, but that number was taken <laughs> on the Orioles. Oh, very good, very good. And it, read, it reads from one Iron Man to another. Congratulations on uh, 19 great years at GMA, and it's presented uh, to you uh, this day. Well, that's very good. Nice. Thank you. Very good. You know, it's absolutely true. I, you, you approach this job. I read a book that Cal wrote when I first started this job about you show up every day, you're enthusiastic every day, you're there to play the game, and that really was an inspiration to me, the way you approach baseball, very much the way somebody needs to approach this job. Thank you. And not, uh, you know, the Orioles are great. That's his first <laughs> luck. You know that. But there's a new team in town as well, and they didn't want to be 
Oh, left out. It's great to have baseball back in Washington yes, as well. There's so going to be a great rivalry yeah. between the Nats and the I feel the like Dana White. And the Nationals. <laughs> and so they as well, not to be outdone, uh, autographed. You see that there? If I'd stayed one more year, I could have had Frank yeah. Robinson's number, too. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been nice. Thank the you Nationals very much. As well. So. Well, that's very nice. Both teams could use a little help this year, but I'm way too old to uh, you, We should put you back in uniform. No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> but anyway, Cal is, done, Cal is now doing a lot, a tremendous amount for youth baseball. And that is a very, very important thing to keep kids interested in the game. It's a wonderful way that he's devoting himself still to the game. And I'm really honored that you would come uh, and be here today. Thank you very much. And he's your number one fan. And oh. I'm going to miss talking sports with you. We, we both will, right? Yeah, I really will. I came in early for that. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back. Come on we'll back. be back. Thanks. We just have 30 minutes left with Charlie here on Good Morning America, but there's still special guests. And Would be there more? more. Yeah, but wait, there's I, more. Oh, more. Mm -hmm. I want to say, you know, since it is Charlie's final day, and as you know, he's shipping off to World News tonight, two of his future competitors decided that they too wanted to say something to him. And by the way, their graphics are their own inventive take. Take a look at this. I am all about my friend Charlie. Charlie's a pro. He brings his very best game every time he goes out there. As much as we are competitors by day, it's my friendship with Charlie that I value most. Let our bosses worry about ratings and numbers and competition. I guess what I'm saying is I want what's best for Charlie Gibson. Again, I know a lot of people are going to doubt my sincerity, but I'm just blurting out here how I feel about the guy. Now, Charles, one door closes and another opens. I'll be watching that doorway. Congratulations and good luck with limits. I think you're terrific. I've always admired your generosity of spirit, your ability to keep things in perspective, and your basic kindness. So I wish you all the best, Charlie, and, and uh, see you in September. Oh, is that yeah, nice of them nice. to do I that? I want to say again, Brian. Brian's graphics, that insincere, that was him. We didn't add those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's think I did. we No, did no, he that. has a wonderful, wonderful sense well, of humor, and that was very sweet of Katie to do that as well. Hail, the gang is all here. Yeah. yeah. So Whatever happened to you? What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to find out. <laughs> so, Joan, uh, looking back, Charlie well, Looking changed. back, I remember coming in in the mornings, and when you would leave, David, we'd say, you know, who's going to sit in for you? We'd say, that guy on Capitol Hill. <laughs> and you started doing the show, and I remember after our very first show together, uh, we were down in Florida. Right. We went to dinner with your dad that night. You remember this? Oh, sure. And I said to your dad, what was Charlie like as a little boy? Did you think that he would end up in news or politics or something? And he said, oh, yeah. From the time he could start reading, he was reading the papers, had to read all the papers. And when he was eight years old, he was reading the congressional record. <laughs> eight years old. And he knew everybody, everybody on Capitol Hill. So, That's true. I mean, That's you were true. really, I mean, you designed yourself. I mean, that this is this was your love. And no, you're I was very just fortunate. a nerd and a wonk. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing was, was he hid them under the bed, which is very strange. <laughs> To be able to do what you love? Yes, that's I absolutely mean, true. You're very fortunate to have ended up that way. We all have been yeah. when we get these jobs. Yeah. Uh, it is extraordinary. I remember Phil Buth, when I took this job, I said, I'm not sure what it is. He said, have fun, be curious. It was like a Miller Lite commercial. You know, it tastes great, less filling. But that's as good a description as I ever heard. But yeah. Charlie, I speak, I think, for millions of people in our country when I say that we're grateful for the wisdom and the knowledge and the humanness that you have brought 
to all of the people here and to us around the country who get up in the morning and watch you. And I am grateful for the fact that you are going to be doing the same thing in the evening and telling us what's going on in the world with that same wisdom and, and humor. And I am grateful for the fact that you and I, over these 19 years that you've been here, have become friends, and I'm grateful for that. Well, I'm going to say at the end, you started this. You made this possible. Essentially, you put my kids through college. You <laughs> <laughs> and, and mine. And, and one of mine did go to Princeton, by the way. That's right. And more would have if we'd only been more persuasive. But that's true. And this woman as well, and these women over here. It's just, I have been so blessed in the people that I got to work with. And it Tony, really you, is you've great. seen the, the, the other side of Charlie as well, the, yeah. the, the humor the, side. The great thing about Charlie, as David just mentioned, you are you are a rock, and as I said on, on my last show here, you're, you're, you are the real deal. You are uh, to us uh, what you are to the rest of America. One of my favorite things about this uh, broadcast and working with you was getting, to, getting you to laugh at different times and just having fun. And, and we had many, many wonderful moments. It was great. It really, really was wonderful. What were uh, you thinking of when you mentioned putting the congressional record under the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can I, do, do I have that box? Uh, can I just show you something? Oh, no. Here we, 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 go. we Somehow, I got a gift for you. The show didn't know this. Uh, this is my gift to you from the Washington <laughs> National. I don't know how it got put and, in and, the and, and Diane grabbed it out of your hand and gave it to yeah. me. <laughs> but, but it's from the Washington National. Oh, Frank Robinson is signed. Is signed. Frank right. Robinson, Alfonso Soriano, and a, and a lot of people. So. Holy cow. Oh, but so but cool. since... Ryan since, Zimmerman? Since Terrific. you have, uh, since Cal Ripken came out and gave you an Orioles jersey, I'll take that. You get the hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Tony we know and love. Well, yeah. uh, you did a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have done anything, it would have been to play baseball in my life. You were a great baseball player as a young man. I don't think many people know that David played very minor league baseball, but he played. He played. Uh, could have, he could, he have me. could have been a contender. Could have, yeah. But when I was in college, they started curving the ball, and that was the end. But strangely enough, the closest thing that I can find analogous to baseball is being here because it is such teamwork, and you love the team, and that is really what makes this all so much fun. Thank you all for coming. The three oh, hey, Love you all. Time now for the weather. Mike Bars. And good morning, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, before you leave, I know we only worked together for about 10 months, but I wasn't going to leave without showing you a token of my appreciation for making me feel very welcome here as a family. So I went back and looked at all our great moments together and uh, compiled this box set right here for you, Charlie. It's Charlie and Bars. Golden moment. There's, uh, there's, there's, uh, well, there's volume one, and then there's, um, well, there's volume one, and then I love this one. This is volume one, and the last one, volume one, right here, is a director's cut, which is just <laughs> there's a twist at the end, so you want to stick around for that. It'll be sitting over here. Let's briefly get you caught up on the weather. More rain here in New York City and in the Northeast. Scattered storms possible for the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Sunny and hot for the Southeast and Southern Plains, and scattered thunderstorms out in the Rockies and West Coast. And that's a brief look at the national picture. Here's what's happening. There you go. As we head through your Wednesday, a pretty decent day. The only exception may be just a hit or miss shower or thunderstorm, especially as we go through the afternoon. We'll keep an eye on that. We are in the slight risk for severe weather, especially east of Grand Rapids. Quieter for Thursday and Friday and warmer by the end of the weekend. And this portion of the weather brought to you by LendingTree.com. Diane? And we've got some other old friends dropping by. In a second, we'll take a break. Stay tuned. East of the sun and west of the moon, we'll build a dream house of love, dear. Near to the sun in the day, near to the moon at night, we'll live in a lovely way, dear. Living on love and the pale moonlight, just you and I. Great reunion right here. I want to point out that uh, a couple of our friends couldn't be here today. Jack Hanna, 
all his furry friends over Charlie's Darn year. Rain held him up. Rain held him up, and our beloved Joel Siegel is not feeling his best this morning. We love you, Joel, and we know he's watching and here in every possible way. And well, we got Snyderman and Johnson. <laughs> you do. Boy, do we have medical the help here. <laughs> we can handle anything. The doctors are in the house. Nancy Snyderman, Tim Johnson. So, Nancy, number one memory of Charles? It's hard with Gibson because, you know, they're all packed into one spot, but I would have to say with regard to television, you know how much Charlie loves babies. They bring tears to his eyes now that Reese is here. But the morning we did Baby Oh Baby, and we opened right. up the 7 o'clock hour. It was 7 o'clock and 2 seconds, and we had a baby popping the world. <laughs> Went back to uh, see Ch Gibson, and there was, look, look at him. <laughs> there was right. the That was tear. a great morning. That was a great, great morning. On the broadcast. Charlie's yeah. always had this way of celebrating life. And with, but with, with babies, you can see it. He's always understood this renewal. And, when my um, grandson was born, it's about new life. It is. It's about renewal, and you've always understood that. I thought you were going to mention when we were in the uh, refugee camp in, in Macedonia, and we opened the half hour, Nancy and I are standing side by side, and I'm talking on, and after two minutes, she grabs my sleeve and says, you haven't introduced me yet, no, and I'm standing I think it here was looking this. like a look. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> There isn't anything we haven't talked about over the years. Uh, we talk a lot about family, and in fact, I'm going to be privileged to conduct the uh, wedding for his youngest daughter in the fall, which reminds me of an episode two months ago in the upstairs studio when we were having a reception for hospital people from around the country, and Charlie had introduced me, and he said, Tim and I are very good friends, and we're about to become better friends because he's going to marry my daughter. He did it with... <laughs> He did it with a perfectly straight face, and I saw some gas, heard some gas from the crowd. Then he went on to say with a perfectly straight face, and it's a bit strange because he's almost 70 and she's only 29, <laughs> at which point the jaws were dropping to the floor. So, Charlie, in your next life, you should be an orthopedic surgeon because you're very good at pulling our legs. Uh, <laughs> only you could have done that joke. <laughs> but, Charlie, these, you know, when we say family, you know, GMA family, and I know some people think, oh, that's cute. We, these truly are family members. Yeah, I mean, the way you all stay very much a part of each other's lives. Tim and I have been here really from, from when Charlie first came. You were, you preceded me, and I came right after Charlie came up from Washington. So it's um, Nancy a long was, time. Nancy was a doctor, did occasional segments, worked in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I said, you should be filling in for John London, and she did for so many years. Yeah, and it was great. great. Well, it was I want great. To tell and you. Tim has, is, the, is the best. He it just is, is the best is. in dispensing medical information but in dispensing it in a way that is understandable and that just touches people you are a marvel I think thank you Jerry. and he I is a doctor to all of us and what he did for Peter when Peter was sick yeah. is something we'll never be able yeah. to thank him enough for now we all depend on you big shoulders but they're telling me my ear that I have to tell you something yes that we were trying to think what we could do for you and what we could do in your honor. And we have one last surprise for you, which is this morning ABC News is announcing the creation of the Charles Gibson Good Morning America Scholarship. And it's going to be awarded to an undergraduate or graduate student who exemplifies Charlie's commitment to the craft and to family and to the community. And it will also be an internship and a stipend here at Good Morning America. Wow. And That's so cute. You got me. Nice. You got me. <laughs> that is so cool. Kid better work hard. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. So we'll have a Charles Gibson. Oh, that was your idea. That's great. Kind of Charles Gibson with us in the morning. Here. Oh. It's very fitting. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back. Stay with us. Yeah. Back in summer on World News Tonight. And so this wonderful 19-year experience of a lifetime comes to an end. I've always believed this is the best named broadcast in the history of television. And I've always said we broadcast at an hour that you wouldn't have your best friend into the house. The dishes aren't done, the beds aren't made, the kids are at their wildest. But you let us come into your homes and you treat us like friends. We share your breakfast table every day and that is always so important to us, but never more so than when we went through the national agony of 9-11 or the long trial of picking a president in the year 2000. I will miss our breakfast conversations more than I can adequately say, and I will miss the folks who work on this broadcast on air and off. 
There are no two people about whom I care more in this business than Diane Sawyer and Robin Roberts. I didn't know Diane very well when we started our temporary gig here. I just knew that I loved her as a broadcaster and I came quickly to love her as a human being and a person. And Robin is an American original who we knew from the day she walked on this set would fit right in and she is a joy to spend time with. Joan London, Spencer Christian, Tony Perkins, Kate Snow, Bill Weir, Joel Siegel, be well Joel, uh, Tim Johnson, Nancy Snyder, and there are too many people to name that you've seen on the air. They are all so good at what they do and they all share the love that we have for this franchise of Good Morning America. David Hartman started it. It's been around 30 years. We expect it's gonna be around at least 30 more. A couple of personal mentions, if you'll allow me. Phil Buth, who hired me when everyone thought he was crazy. <laughs> David Weston, who would not let me leave ABC, my thanks to you. Executive producers these past eight years, Ben Sherwood and Shelley Ross. Grace Wong, who has put up with me since the beginning. <laughs> Sin Cindy Riley, who has looked after my interests better than I could, my heartfelt thanks to you. To the magnificent staff of this broadcast, you all deserve raises. But I'm, but I'm going to let the audience in on a secret. Almost everyone who works here comes away saying it was the best job, maybe the most exhausting, but the best job they ever had. And to you who watch, the greatest thanks of all. We have met some of you on the road, and many of you have come to visit our studios. We deeply appreciate that you let us be a small part of your lives. Diane and Robin are going to be here tomorrow. Good Morning America is going to go on better than ever. But once more, I say, good morning, America. For 19 years, my mornings have <laughs> almost made it. For 19 years, my mornings have not just been good, they have been great. Thank you. We'll be back. Good Morning America is brought to you by Splendid No Calorie Sweetener. Bam. Go. David, you started us a toast. David. Charlie, to you, with great thanks from millions of us for what you've done for us in the morning, and we cannot wait till 6.30 tonight for you to continue <laughs> the legend of Charlie Gibson. Look out in the sea and see all the people that work with us behind the scenes that are here. They are the best. You have laid such a wonderful foundation, David and Joan, before you, and it is a privilege to carry on what you have. You're going to be great. Thank you. And I want to say, Natalie Merchant, thank you because you're going to take us off the air today. It's really for Charlie's kindness that we have these final minutes. Oh.